Welcome back to the video on the channel. I was just gonna mute my in-game mic just in like in case someone's like in my party or something. Yeah, in today's video, I'm actually gonna be teaching you guys how to like increase your aim in Fortnite. This will probably be like more of sh increasing your shotgun aim rather than your AR aim. But yeah, it, either way, it'll probably work for both. It teaches you what to do and what not to do for AR aim and what to do and what not to do for shotgun aim. But yeah, basically, it's all aiming all around and uh, it's just like overall aim in Fortnite, basically. It's gonna be like aim of edits, aim of builds, etc. But basically, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys about a setting my sub told me while we're playing the Zone Wars on stream. So, normally, this is on Exponential, I just saved it before. Uh, you have to change it to Linear to do this, right? So, basically, you click Apply, and Linear is more like your raw stick motion, is, is what it's explained as, I'm pretty sure. But say, yeah, raw stick input, so you'll, it'll feel a lot more touchy if you change it and you're not used to it. But basically... You also need to change your edit speeds and stuff as well with, along with it, but um, it's a lot more touchy compared to exponential, so you can get used to it a lot more, and that's why I believe it's better for shotgun aim. Also, my settings are all wrong at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, this is meant to be like 1.4, this is meant to be 66. Yeah, so if you guys, actually I'll change this so I can prove to you guys it works. So if you guys want to copy your settings from here, but you don't want to like figure it out because it's actually is different if you'll see in a second you can either go to copy from legacy if you have it on legacy look control so this is legacy look uh it copies i don't even know where this is copying from to be honest but yeah if you just go copy from basic it copies your basic settings which are at the top here and it puts it at 66 because this is just what the settings are in like contrast to like from from exponential to linear this is just what linear is because it's more touchy compared to an 8 rather than a 6.6 .6. so yeah um i believe this is better for your shotgun aim rather than your ar aim because it's consistent right so if you move your stick this much it's gonna flick that far if you move your stick this much it's gonna go that far with the exponential you don't know what it's gonna do or you do know what it's gonna do you get a feel for it but it's not as consistent if you know what i mean I haven't actually seen a lot of people talking about this, so make sure you guys do actually go give this a try and let me know what you guys think of it. As you guys will be able to see though, if I aim at, so say I want to aim at these two things, it is actually quite hard to aim with my AR from that far away. Also because I'm pretty sure aim assist isn't as strong with it linear as it is with exponential, but really this is like talking about like shotgun aim increasing rather than um, AR aim, so yeah. I'd say if you guys are looking to increase your ARM, stay on exponential and just work on L2 spamming basically because L2 spamming is literally broken. But with linear, it's I personally it's so much better with edits. Like you can, oh okay, I messed up there. But yeah, oh my god, I'm lagging so bad because I'm doing the modern warfare update. But yeah, personally, I believe this is so much better for edits. I'm lagging. I can't even do anything because you just it's consistent with everything. So like you can just flick everything like. You know what I mean? I mean, that was still terrible, but you know, you get the gist. I'm not, I'm not a Fortnite pro. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to smash a like so I know you guys did enjoy it and you like this kind of content. I haven't really made content like this before in the past, so I would have actually appreciated if you guys give me some feedback on this. If you guys made it this far in the video uh, and you made it to the end of the video, you probably like my content for some reason, so you should probably like consider subscribing or something. Uh, maybe turn the notifications on. I mean, it's up to you anyway, but whatever. Um, but yeah, if you guys did make it this far, comment in the leave a comment in the comments below saying a minty pickaxe because that's just what I'm holding in my hand and that's what's like trendy at the moment in Fortnite. It's been Zen. Peace. Entire world? You think about Booga, Clicks, Dubs, or whoever else, and you probably associate them with having a huge brain. I don't mean like literally having like a huge brain, like their heads are all big and they look like aliens or something like that. You know what I mean, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about 200 IQ or whatever gamers are calling it these days. Regardless, this is usually attributed to how they make absolutely crazy plays. Most importantly, these top high IQ pros seem to be pulling rabbits out of their hats like they're in the movie Now You See Me or create sophisticated outplays that none of us average Joes could ever imagine. This is why, my friends, we're going to be breaking it all down for you guys and talk about how to develop high IQ just like the pros. 
You mean to tell me you can teach people to get smarter? Hey, welcome back, old man Rudy. Creepy as ever. <laughs> and I let you know right now, I know some of you guys are saying, oh, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit in Fortnite. Listen, the sky is not the limit in anything that you can do in your life. This is going to be the best year of your life. You guys ready for that? Are you ready for that? But you got to believe it first. We believe in you. So keep going. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. So today I am so excited, I hope you can hear it in my voice, like genuinely excited about this video because no matter how skilled you are, from complete bot, which there are many of you out there, no shade on you, if, if that's you, I'm glad that you're here, we're all trying to grow, to top competitive performers, hey, we all have room to grow. This topic is just one of those things that I think you're really gonna like what we gotta say. Speaking of liking things, what a coincidence, that's so weird. Why don't you like, wink wink this video, just an idea. You guys know the drill. It takes literally a second and it tells us that we're doing a good job. We put a huge amount of time to deliver daily videos and all we ask in return is some love in return. You know what I mean? So if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, I recommend that you check out, when you can, Instapro, where we have live 24-7 coaching from some of the best players, not just in the world, but like in the universe, for real. Head on over to ProGuys.com right now. Trust me, you're not gonna regret it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, get my favorite snack. You already know what it is. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get it going. Okay, so first and foremost, we really need to talk about what high IQ really means. I know, I know, you probably see this term being spammed in virtually every Twitch chat, to the point where I kind of feel like the term has just lost a lot of its meaning. People will call any cool looking play a 200 IQ, bro, and I feel like it's just best to lay some groundwork regarding developing high IQ. So, in reality, high IQ can really be broken down as making smart and calculated plays that really allow you to think three, four, even five steps into the future. The concept of high IQ shouldn't be expressed in one just pop-off play. Although we have definitely seen some short bursts of insanely smart plays, it's also worth noting that making those individual or micro plays really sprouted and flourished due to the fact that really good players practice in a very macro sense, in a very huge sense, right? So today, I'm gonna be pushing away from the notion that having a high IQ means always taking a risk to get the high reward. The real smarts come when you assess when that award greatly exceeds the potential risk that you may experience. Some of you guys are like, what the heck did he just say? You guys know I love using analogies. So here's another one. If you wanna build a tall and beautiful building, which is your Fortnite abilities, you're gonna to have to lay an equally beautiful and large foundation to build on. And guys, the foundation is this video. To get a better idea of what I mean by smart and calculated plays, let's talk about picking your battles. Picking your battles is something that pro players can just calculate with ease, like it's nothing, because it really comes down to risk versus rewards. So keep that concept. You know what, everybody just say together, come on. Risk and rewards, say it one more time so I can believe it. Risk and rewards. Now, I feel like a teacher in a classroom, this is kinda awkward. But you know what, you better listen to me or I'm gonna send you to the principal's office. That was the place I was way too familiar with as a kid, oh. So you better listen and do well, you don't wanna go there. Anyways, picking your battles can be broken down in many ways, from mid game to end game, or even how you want to secure the elimination. So let's roll some footage on my boy Clicks so I can really show you what I mean from here. Right at the start, Clicks is getting ahead of the zone and making his tunnel rotation. On his way to safe side, he stumbles across another rotator and instantly places a floor and cone to gain control of the situation. Here is where our first decision comes to play. Does he decide to go for the edit and commit to the fight or continue making his way to zone? Hmm. Well, let's see. He hasn't been contested or spammed by anyone else so far, which leads Clicks to believe he has an opportunity to 1v1 this guy. Also, if you guys can tell, he's chilling on the mid ground, which means he won't have to worry about low ground warriors that are trying to make their way back to the safe zone. Also, if you look here, they aren't high enough to realistically have to worry about people that are contesting high ground. All in all, seems like deciding to get aggressive here is safe, but Clicks only has a split second to decide this. Let's see what he ends up doing. And just like that, Clicks ends up making a good decision editing down and lands a huge pump body shot and instantly giving him the upper hand in the fight. But there's another problem here, guys. Look at this. The opponent is running away. Where you going, buddy? Come on, come on back. Hey, come back. 
Fair enough, I wouldn't want to fight against Clicks either. But now our good friend Clicks has to reassess the situation and decide whether pursuing the engagement is worth it. And what strategy should he take to safely keep his foot on the gas? Okay, so first off, Clicks noticeably slows things down once a third party sends some AR fire his way. He takes a few seconds to gather his bearings. I feel like I'm an old English man from like the 1600s. His bearings. And he finds out just exactly where that pesky runaway went. You can't fight someone if you don't know where they are, unless you're like a psychic. <laughs> Sorry, dramatic. Anyways, now Clix makes a new box towards Zone just as he spots the guy who he knows is low. Instead of continuing his tunnel on the same level that he was initially planning on, Clix drops down a level to a lair that he knows is unoccupied to continue the battle. Come on, man, how do we know it's unoccupied? Hey, old man Rudy, good question. Well, the guy he was fighting just built that tarp, and I almost guarantee you that this is why he felt so comfortable dropping a tooth the enemy builds. This micro readjustment was actually way safer than any other strategy that Clicks could have used, simply because he read the scene perfectly. When I break this down to you, you might feel comfortable with the results, but Clicks doesn't get the luxurious time to make his decisions. The entire clip was 15 seconds long. 15 seconds long, and each decision was made in less than a second. We spent way longer than that making our decisions like we're playing in slow motion. On the topic of decisions, decisions are much more complex than just fighting. Deciding when to pull the trigger and to take high ground is an equally important move that can make or break your game. You might even tune in to watch Twitch.tv and find yourself screaming about how the pros get hyped every single time for free. Is that just me? <laughs> uh, it's not you? Uh, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> Anyways, high ground can look so easy when a pro does it, but it's just so much more difficult when you and I try to do it. Here, let's take a look at Goshan as he clutches an insane trio in-game clutch with no other teammates alive. Sean plays his role very cautiously, as one should. He's trying to rack up the placement points with a bit of luck so he can win that epic victory royale. Boom! One kill. Once he gets the thirst, the first thing that pops out in my mind is that there's a launch pad on his dead body. Sean seems to notice this too. Good for you, Sean. As he's making a desperate attempt now out of the 10 ticking zone, uses the launch. Height is clear and he snags it. This is a really good opportunity which was only able to come to fruition because he had the awareness to stay calm and he realizes that he had the launch pad. Most of you guys, myself included, can't count me out, simply just don't have the awareness sometimes to put ourselves in situations where we can just take the high ground and put ourselves in spots to actually get that dub. This, my friends, is what separates us from the best in the world. They wouldn't be called the best if they didn't have the goods to back it up. But you know, if you're still feeling uneasy about taking height, hey, I got a solution for you. Let Booga show you another alternative. All you gotta do, which is really, really simple, okay? Really simple. Just kill the entire lobby before zones start. <laughs> yeah, okay, but for real. Getting high ground is sometimes impossible to get, but don't worry, we still got you covered. Let's talk about playing the mid ground. Guys, playing mid ground is often just as easy as just holding height, especially when you're playing large team formats that practically offer unlimited mats. I think Booga is a shining example of someone who consistently plays the mid ground, and he makes it work too. Let's take a look at how Booga plays the tunnel like a champ. We could talk about uncontested tunneling, right? But there really isn't any fun in that. Instead, let's take a look at probably the most unlucky scenario when the entire lobby tries targeting you and see how the best responds. All right, so Booga gets hit with a rocket right at the start, and he's basically a target for the rest of the clip. His teammates is running low on mats, go figure, and there are tons of enemy builds in front of Booga and company. At this point, many people would freeze up and just chalk up that L like, dude, this is just not my game. But not our friend Booga, look at this, he finds the least path of resistance, which in this case is dropping down below the enemy builds to continue his tarp out. There aren't really many options in this scenario, okay? But the quick thinking from Booga extends his and his team's life in the scrim match. Finding the least path of resistance is just really important, especially in a scenario like this when the entire lobby has your name on their minds. Let's review what we went over today. You now know what high IQ really means. It doesn't mean hero plays or short Twitter clips, and it doesn't mean you have a big head with a big brain. It means that if you play smarter overall and think multiple steps forward, there's gonna be an increase in IQ. With that, you're gonna be able to pick up your battles wisely, yes. See Clix's reference and how he uses his huge cranium to put himself in a more ideal spot to confirm the LM. So simple, it surely puts a tear in my eye, <laughs> yes. And now you finally outlast 90% of the lobby, you did it. Now it's time to make that play. 
Do you look for a height or find the easiest path to get to the next safe zone? We discuss both options. So it's now time to use your newly acquired 200 IQ brain to make that life or death decision. The goal for this video is to give you the tools to make good decisions and obtain better game sense. So to actually put these tools into good use, you gotta do what the pros do every single day. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, your favorite word of the month, practice. The only way that you're gonna make smart decisions on a dime is if you apply yourself, right? And maybe one day you're gonna make it look so easy just like the pros. Ladies and gentlemen, Best controller buying for Fortnite 2. Let's get right to it. I'm going to start off with my sensitivity, then we'll move on to my regular settings and we'll finish off with my binds. A fortune cookie told me to use code direct in the item shop for good luck. I don't know what that means, but I just want to put that out there for you guys, see what you could do with it. Anyway, to start off, we're going to head over to my sensitivity settings. I use the legacy settings, the old ones. So I have my XY on a 0.725. My wireless targeting, that's your ADS. When you aim down sights, 0.55. My scope sensitivity with a sniper or scoped AR is 0.65. And then my building and editing are 155 and 154. I already did a full breakdown. Uh, you can check the video above for why I think legacy settings are better than the new ones and why you may want to swap to the new ones. There are a couple reasons for it. Um, but anyway, check the video above if you want to learn more about that. So moving on to my settings. Um, let's hop down here. First off, you need Sprint by default if you don't have it already. I'm sure most of you do, but that is going to help us out a ton later with our controller binds. It's going to make you a better player. Tap to search slash interact. I have on so I can drop some goodies for my buddies when I pick them up, when I'm reviving them. You need to have reset build choice on. This is a must have. It does not affect anything anymore. It used to before Builder Pro came out. I have a video above explaining how reset build choice will help you wall replace enemies twice as often. So you can check the video above if you need help with that. Aim assist obviously is going to be on. I do not have enough control of my thumb to turn it off. Turbo build on, easy stuff. Controller auto run I have on. You're going to want to turn this off if you are playing regular solos. If you're playing group matches, duo squads, or arena, then you need to have this on, obviously. It won't let you do it otherwise. But to me, it's not as much of a fun experience when I may be mechanically better than the other player, but my hardware is what's holding me back. I know not all PC players get 240 frames. Some might get 60, some might get 90, but they can turn off shadows and a host of other things that make their frames so much better than ours. So definitely turn this off whenever you can. Auto open doors, you're gonna to wanna to turn this off. I'm gonna show you why right here. Let's say that you are trying to do a play like this, where you're trying to bait a shot from someone else, right? So you do a quick edit reset, something like that. You put a door here to get them to try and shoot. If they're on the other side and they have auto door open for one thing, then it's gonna force them to open the door, which is gonna leave them wide open for a nice little pickaxe little pump to the face, you know, a little pump Johnson. The other thing is when you turn this off, you can actually get through doors faster. So if we scroll down here and we turn this off like we like to, you can do this a couple ways. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but if you swap to your builds, here's the normal, see how I walk through the door? But if I swap to my builds or if I swap to a weapon, you know, we got these things here. You can do this with this. If you just swap to a different gun, you cruise right through. So this is gonna help you in escaping dicey situations, stuff like that. Always turn that off, in my opinion. Confirm edit on release. This is a huge new setting that'll help you edit faster. I have a 90 second breakdown comparing the three editing styles in the link above. So click that if you want a full explanation. A quicker explanation is if you use normal editing where you have the same button, editing and confirming, I highly suggest you turn this on. If you use double edit binds, that still can be quicker. So you should keep this off. I have perfect double edit binds that have no consequences. I have a set of double edit binds for those of you on a normal controller that have some trade-offs with it. So we'll get to that at the end of the video and you can decide for yourself which way to go about it. There's a building nerf that Epic kind of went through. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not. Having it off feels like a little bit better. It might be a placebo, but once they iron this out again, you should have it on. It will make your building quicker. Vibration off, personal preference. Usually I've heard that you can increase your performance, your frame drops, if you have all these off. I need them on for content. So if you don't need to make content, inform people, entertain them, whatever, you don't want to entertain yourself, then you can just turn these off. So that's all we have for the settings. Next up is the button binds. This is gonna be a little more extensive and I will show you why these are the best and how you can make them the best for a normal controller. I use a paddle controller, I use evil controller. Uh, these guys are the best in the business. So you have these paddles back here that make Fortnite easier for me. 
You guys know I used to use Scuff. I don't like them anymore. When they work, they're great. I hope yours works if you have one. But after four repairs, I kind of gave up on them on the same controller. That was enough for me. These guys, these controllers are comfortable, durable, and affordable. Those are the three bulls I want in a controller. So this is not a sponsored video. I just really like these controllers. Um, but if you're interested, I can give you a $20 discount or give you personal recommendations to see what would be right for you. Um, all you have to do to get that is just follow and DM me on Twitter at DirectYT. Now, I'm gonna break down my binds on paddles first since I already have it set up, and then I'll tell you how you can be better with a normal controller. The goal with paddles is to keep your thumbs on the sticks as much as possible, so I can always be aiming while jumping or building or whatever. So to start off, I have jump and edit on the D-pad because they're gonna be on paddles, right? So I play normally, I just have these paddles. I'm not playing claw or anything. Um, I'm never gonna click these buttons. It takes a lot of time. Map I have on the left D-pad because here's where we will go. If I am trying to place traps, let's grab some traps here, okay? I'll grab five of them, okay? And I'm trying to build battle someone, right? Let's say trap them in the, this box. Normally what you have to do, it's, it's normally on square, I think, is how you place them. What I would have to do is I would have to aim first, then I would have to spam square, move my stick, and spam square again, right? That's gonna make trap killing a lot more difficult. So instead, what I do is I have it on the touchpad. I highly recommend you do this either way. I have this on the touchpad, so now I can use my left thumb to place traps while I aim, and it's gonna be that much quicker. If you're on Xbox, I think putting it on your select button will do the same thing, it'll be just as good for you guys. So I have that in build mode, trap picker slash place slash interact. Since I don't jump on X, I want to put something on there that needs like immediate things to happen. So I put change materials on there. I think this is the best setup because if I'm ramping at someone, then I can change my materials as I go. And so it'll make it that much more difficult to shoot me out. Or maybe I'm just navigating up a hill or something. You know, I'm on metal. I don't want to use metal. Really quickly, I can swap to brick or wood or whatever. Other than that, the last two things for my binds are I have crouch, regular crouch on R3. I put that on build controls as well, so I can crouch when I'm building. I have repair on square. So even though I only have repair on square in build mode, even though I'm in combat right now, I have a gun out, whatever, I can still hold square and it'll work like that. The last thing is I just have reset on L2. This is just the easiest for me. It makes it really easy for me to reset edit really quickly. If I wanted to do a quick window edit reset, try and beta shot, something like that. Um, L2 means I also don't have to take my thumbs off the stick, so that's the best place for it in my opinion. One other thing you can do if you want to is you can place your traps in build mode on L3. I feel like I click the touchpad a little quicker than I do L3 for whatever reason, but either one you put these on is going to be great. It's going to help you place them faster and you'll be able to do it while aiming. If you do put your trap picker on L3, then you can either have sprint slash auto sprint on your touchpad in both modes. Or you can go ahead and you can keep this as your map. One other thing you can do if you have four paddles and you're okay with giving up your marker is you can place interact on L3. So this is going to let you grab a loot quicker because you're going to be able to aim while you grab stuff. I know I've noticed this lately where I've been in fights for loot. Like let's say when I open a chest, let's put a chest here. So I'm landing on this chest. Someone else is landing with me. I'm going to hit L3 to search. And then, instead of needing to look down and then hit square to pick it up, in which time the other guy might take it, I can just look down and pick it up at the same time. Finally, on two paddles, what I would do is I would put jump or edit on L3, and I would put the other one somewhere on the D-pad. So let's say, for instance, I want to put jump on L3, I want to edit on the D-pad, and I want to switch mode on circle. Now what I can do is I can jump and aim with L3, I can have my paddle as edit, and then I can have my other paddle as build. So you'll still be able to do the three key actions without taking your thumbs off the sticks. Now the last thing we're gonna do is the fun part. For those of you on a normal controller, these are the best binds you can possibly have in Fortnite 2. I say that because it's my opinion, a lot of people have agreed, but it's gonna be personal preference, so do whatever you want with these. The best thing you can do is use L3 for either jump, or edit. You have to have crouch on one of the sticks, L3 or R3. For me, I like R3. I'm gonna show you why you cannot take it off this. There's two reasons. First off is if you don't have crouch on here, then you can't peek shot. 
I am pretty much shooting through my ramp here. You can barely see my head. I'm not gonna get shot when I do this. Second thing you need for it is when I am trying to make an edit play on someone, then what I want to do in a window edit is I wanna shoot, crouch, and turn to the side, okay? And if you do this quick enough, then you are shooting and your entire player model is moving to the side and ducking, making it really, really difficult for you to get hit. So it's gonna help you a ton with taking less damage. So put that on one of the sticks. In combat, you want to have it as just crouch, not crouch slash repair. So the reason is anytime there's one of these buttons that have two actions to them, like reload slash interact or crouch slash repair. When you have two of them, the first action is always going to be slower than if it was on its own. So I'm going to show you my crouching here. It's going to be tough to see, but if you do it in game, you'll be able to feel the difference. When I crouch, there is a super small but noticeable delay to the crouch. If I turn it on as just crouch without repair, it's immediate. And that's okay because when we go into build mode, we're going to change this to crouch slash repair. So this way we can still repair a building if we need to. We go into build mode and we can still repair stuff. My whole goal with this setup is to keep your thumbs on the sticks as long as possible. So you can choose if you wanna have jump or edit on L3 or the other stick, it's up to you. And the reason for that is if we're in a shotgun fight or we're trying to build or something like that, we can jump and aim at the same time, right? I'm clicking and I'm aiming. Instead of if you had it on X or A on Xbox, then I would have to click X, right? I'd have to be running up at a guy, right? ramping at this dude. If I want to jump over, I'd have to take my thumb off the stick to jump and then I'd aim. So I couldn't do it as fluidly. It would, instead of being able to track someone like this, it would look more like this. It'd be super choppy. It makes your aiming difficult. I really think that the skill gap for this chapter is gonna be editing. If you can become a good editor, you're gonna be a lot better than most players. So in combat, I recommend putting jump on L3, crouch on R3, crouch by itself. We're gonna put edit on X because again, that's gonna be the quickest movement over here from the thumbstick to a button. And obviously we wanna want be able to edit as quick as possible. Since we're talking about editing, I'm gonna skip ahead and show you double edit binds, how you can do this on a normal controller. So like I said before, double edit binds are quicker than edit releasing. If you don't wanna do this, then just turn on edit release and keep your editing the same. If you wanna speed up your editing a little bit, in exchange for a small trade-off, then you're gonna to wanna to put edit on L1. And then you can have reset on L2 or R1, okay? So here's what happens when you're doing this. The one issue when you're using this setup of double edit binds is if I make this edit and I don't do it quick enough, I'm gonna place a cone on top here, okay? And the reason for that is because I am building a cone with L1, right? and then I'm also confirming with L1. So if I don't let go in time, it's gonna think I'm still trying to turbo build something. It's entirely possible to do this without placing the cone. You just have to let go quicker. But that is the trade-off. If you can't do it quick enough, you're gonna cone yourself off repeatedly. Same thing goes if you place confirm on L2. If you try and make a ramp edit, then it's entirely possible that you edit through a ramp and you place a second ramp. So double edit binds are gonna be quicker if you can handle that little issue. If you don't wanna deal with that, then you don't need a confirm button. It'll just do it as soon as you release. So recommendation for quickest editing in chapter two is to double edit bind with your confirm on L1. If we go back to combat, we have edit on X, switch mode on circle, all this is standard stuff. I put inventory on up. I have my map and my left D-pad in both modes because this isn't something that you need to do quickly. You can kind of look at the map, you can chill out for a second. You know, it's not like a bang bang play. In the middle of a gunfight, you're gonna be looking at your map, right? Same thing with sprint slash auto sprint. You can do this whenever you're eating a bag of chips, you're chilling with the homies, you just wanna sprint. You can hit this without an issue, it'll take a little bit of time. And then we have our emotes if we want to flex on some people, laugh at some players, make them feel bad about themselves, that's up to you. Oh, uh, you put that on down on the D-pad. And the reason for that is we want to have our place marker on touchpad again, so we can aim and place our marker at the same time. 
And on top of that, it frees us up to put our traps in build mode right here. Again, that's going back to being able to trap kill someone quicker, where you can just spam that shit while you're aiming at the same time. You're gonna wanna put change mats slash traps on square. That is the one change over here. Um, in build control, you can put crash slash repair like I said. Edit's gonna be there, jump's gonna be the same, and everything else is the same. The last thing I forgot about, in your settings. I explained Dead Zone more in depth again in that legacy versus new settings, new sensitivity settings video. But for Dead Zone, I have mine at a 0.10 and a 0.10. I use a thumbstick extender, which is my control freaks. You can also use evil sticks from Evil Controller, which pretty much just gives me more control over my aim. Um, so to compensate for that, I lowered this so things felt a little more immediate for me. If you're on Xbox, the default for this is a 0.2. You need to lower that. That is you don't need to lower it. I think you should. It's going to be personal preference. But if you add it on a .2 on Xbox, try it on a .18 and then a .15 and try to get it down to a .12. On PS4, the default is a .12, which is a great setting. You can go lower if you feel like you can control it. Um, just don't put these too low or... Like it says, the warning, very low dead zones can cause drift, thumbstick drifts, where you're not touching your thumbstick at all but your aim's gonna be drifting. So if you start getting something like this, then just bump up the dead zone a little bit until it's gone. That's pretty much it, man.